In this last video, we're going to dress up our problem here with some fancy graphics. In the first video, we made up a problem. We had a bunch of uh, samples along a line that we added noise to. In the second video, we used linear regression to fit those to a line. And at this point, we don't really know 100% if we're correct. And really, the way to determine that is by plotting this. And if the line passes through the samples pretty well, uh, then we have a pretty good assurance that we are correct. So this is the fancy graphics. Let's go ahead and copy and paste that section header. And we'll call this, uh, how about something like show fancy results? How about that? Well, we know that we're going to want to plot our samples, and then we're also going to want to plot our line through that. So the first step is to calculate a high resolution line. So I'll call that XH. This is the line that's going to go all the way through the point. So we'll use the lin space command, and we'll go from XA to XB in 100 points. Since it's only a line, in fact, we only need two points or something like that. But in pretty soon, these won't be lines. These will be polynomials and curves and other things. And we'll need you know 100 or 1,000 points. So hey, let's go and type in 1,000 just for fun. Uh, modern computers, fast. We won't even have to worry about that. YH is MX plus B. So in this case, our X is XH, the H for the high resolution, plus B. OK, let's show the results. So let's go ahead and plot the high resolution line, XH, YH. And we'll do that with maybe a solid blue line. Let's go ahead and run that. All right, there's our solid blue line. Well, we're also going to want to see the samples around that. So that will be the next thing. Plot X, Y, and we'll do this with red Xs. Now, some of you might already be saying, hey, there's a problem, there's a problem. Let's go ahead and run it like we don't know there's a problem and figure it out. OK, we see our samples, but our blue line has disappeared. And that's because MATLAB sees a plot command and automatically clears the figure window and starts all over. We don't want that. We want to say, hold on, freeze graphics, keep whatever's there, plot right on top of it. Then we'll plot the samples and then hold off. Now we'll see both. At this point, I am not liking the thicknesses of things because I'm thinking if I copy and paste this into a document and then shrink it down, uh, we may lose the lines and points. So I want to make things a little bit thicker. So my blue line, let me go up to a line width of two, see how that looks. That's usually what I jump to first. Sometimes I go thicker. And I can copy and paste that at the end of my red X's. And I really want those to stand out. Let's make those line width of three. Now we'll go ahead and run that. That looks pretty good. So we see these little red X's. They're so fat, you can hardly tell they're X's. Being this fat, let's try little circles. See if that looks any better. And maybe that looks better. I don't know. We'll keep the circles. So what might be next? Well, the next thing I'm looking at are these fonts. They are very, very small. And so let's increase those. Also, the line going around the plot seems a little bit uh, thin. I don't like those. And let's go ahead and fix that. So we'll say set, get current axes. So we're setting properties of the axes. And let's change the font size to, I don't know, maybe 18. And then the line width around the whole thing to 2. Let's see what this looks like. Not too bad. I don't know. For some reason, the mood I'm in right now, I think this line is maybe a little bit thick going around the outside. Let's make this a little bit thinner. Let's call that 1.5. See what that looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Sometimes I'm in the mood to have that line thicker today for whatever reason. I am not. All right. Let's label the axes. That's another thing we always want to do. Label all of our axes. So X label. Well, our x-axis is x, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll run that. And there's our x. And of course, well, there's a problem with that. 
that's a math variable. That should be an italicized X. And the easiest way to fix this is to use the LaTeX interpreter inside MATLAB. So we'll say interpreter, LaTeX interpreter. OK, all fixed, right? Let's go ahead and run that. Uh-oh. Well, it changed the font style. It's now a Roman style font, but it's not italicized. And that's because, yes, we're using a LaTeX interpreter, but we need still need to tell MATLAB that's a math symbol. And so we'll put dollar signs around the outside of that X. Now we have a nice italicized X. The next thing I'm looking at is that X looks kind of small relative to the number. Sometimes I like to make the axis labels a little bit bigger than the font used on the tick marks. And the font used on the tick marks is 18, right? We did that in this line when we set the overall font size. So I might want to use something a little bit bigger. Let's, uh, let's see, font size, how about 24? Nothing's permanent here. If we don't like 24, we can go back and change it. I think that looks pretty good. So what I'll do then is I'll copy my X label, change that to Y label, but here uh, we could be Y or maybe we could even say F of X to be a little bit fancier. Let's go ahead and do that. And we see an F of X here. Now that's not too bad going horizontal, but if, it's, if something here is pretty short, we don't want it rotated like that. Leaving this F of X probably wouldn't be too bad. Um, if it was just a Y, for example, we would want to rotate it. Let's go ahead and just keep it F of X, but rotate it because that's still pretty short. So it's not sideways like that. So I'm going to say comma dot 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 so we can go to the next line. And we'll say rotation is zero. We'll go ahead and run that. And now it's not rotated. But notice it's crammed against the numbers here. And that's bad. And that's because by default, it is center justified. And when we center justify it for something as long as f of x, it gets crammed into the number. So, so don't do that. What we, the way we fix that is through the horizontal alignment. Horizontal alignment right. And now we run it. OK, now there's nice space here. It's not crammed against. It has a nice font size. I think that looks pretty good. The next thing I might pick on is that I don't know what's what. What is this blue thing? What are these red things? Why don't we label that? And an easy way to do that is through a legend. Another way to do that, maybe I copy and paste this into like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator and annotate it there. That's also fine. Let's go ahead and add a legend. Legend. So the very first thing that was plotted was our line. So this was actually our fit line. The second thing we plotted was our samples. Let's go ahead and run this and see what that looks like. Well, there's our legend, but it's over top of maybe some of our data. It's a little bit awkward there. And I think a better place for this legend would either be in the upper left or the lower right. Um, let's go ahead and put it in the lower right. So that is southeast. There's a reason I said that. So legend, the very last thing will say location south east and then it'll place that legend and guess what the southeast or the lower right the next thing i'm looking at is i see a sample that's crammed against the edge i see some maybe awkward white space over here i'd like to fix the axis limits a bit so maybe that's the next thing so we'll say fix axis limits. Well, what are the axis limits? I would like my code to be somewhat automated. So looking at this, how do I know what appears the farthest left and the farthest right? So what's the lowest value of x and the maximum value of x? Well, let me just calculate it. So x1 will be the lowest value of x anywhere. So I'm going to put in all possible values of x inside the min command, and that'll tell me the smallest value of x. So it could be in my samples. It could be in that high resolution line that I calculated. Maybe it's in the limits that I originally gave it. So those are all the values of X that we're using here. Let's check all of them and find the minimum one. I'll copy and paste that, call this one X2, and look for the maximum value. At this point, we'll calculate the total span. 
So the total span, del x, is x2 minus x1. And I'm going to line up my equals because that's something I always do. I like clean code. Clean code always runs better. So now that I have the total span, what I'll do is I'm going to adjust x1 to be the old value of x1 minus some little white space, just as comfortable amount of white space going around the outside. I will try 0.1 times that span. And if that ends up being too much, well, I can just make this a smaller number. So I'll copy and paste that line, and I'll say x2 equals x2 plus some comfortable del x. Let's go ahead and run that and see how that looks. Yeah, you know what? That may be a little too much. Let's go ahead and back off that. Let's cut that little white space in half, 05. And maybe even cut it in half more. I don't know. Let's fix the y-axis limits and see where we are. So I'm going to copy and paste that whole thing because I'm going to do essentially the same thing for the y-axis. I'm going to change all of my x's to y's. Okay, now inside the min command, what's all y's I have? I have my y, I have my yh. I don't have anything else. I didn't define a ya or a yb, so it's just those two that I'll check. y is the samples, and yh is that high-resolution line. All right. You know what we forgot to do is actually set those limits. So we're going to go x1 to x2. And then y lim, we're going to go from y1 to y2. All right, let's see how that looks. I think that looks pretty good. There's a comfortable amount of white space. We could try the point one again. And that added a little bit more white space. I think either of those are pretty good. Uh, we can definitely try like 0.5. And what we'll see is that's going to be ridiculously large, and I won't like that. Yeah, and I don't like that. There's just way too much white space. We're wasting that. This is the detail we want to see, so why are we wasting all of this space? We wouldn't want to do that. Unless maybe we're going to insert something here, some other kind of graphic or some other kind of annotations, in which case we have a need for that white space. Now let's go back to point 0.1. I definitely wouldn't go over point 0.1. 0.05 still look pretty good. And then maybe last, we want to give this a title. And we have not reported the values of M and B. That might be something we can do in the title. Let's go back up here. And we'll say title. Then in the title, we want to put a whole bunch of stuff in. Uh, we want to report the value of M. So I'm going to say dollar sign M equals, because we're doing LaTeX here, and then num to string, whatever our value of M is. Now, we're done part of that LaTeX. Whoops, a dollar sign, not a percent sign. Now we're back to like ordinary text, and I'll say comma space. Then we're going to start doing more math symbols. I'll put another dollar sign, and this is B equals, and then num to string of B. And we're essentially done. So we need a final dollar sign to end the math symbols. And well, if we just did this, watch what happens to the title. And that looks crazy. And that's because we didn't tell it to use the LaTeX interpreter. So it doesn't know that what's inside dollar signs is a math simple symbol. So let's go to the next line. And we will say interpreter is LaTeX. Let's go ahead and run that. And now we have our values of M and B in the title. Is that a great title? Maybe we want to say fit line semicolon M equals whatever, B equals whatever. So I think that's a pretty good graphic. I would be happy enough to copy and paste that into a document. And with maybe a slightly adjusted title, or maybe I'd want to you know, use an equation editor, insert an equation down here or something else. But I think that's pretty good. And that'll be it for this video. I hope you found this useful.